Hi everyone and welcome to the Information Technology Concepts channel. So in this video, we will review the steps that will help us to speed up Windows 11, but also maintain good performance in the long term. So the first things we would like to check is if uh, antivirus is actually running a scan at the moment or any anti-malware programs. Antivirus scans can take a lot of processing powers and as a result, it can significantly slow down your computer. Windows 11 native antivirus software is Defender. We can quickly verify that Windows Defender is not running antivirus scan. You can click on start, type Defender. It won't show you the Defender programs, but it will take you to the Windows security application. You can click on open or double click. As you can see, a full scan is running at the moment. You can see that the estimated time remaining is approximately nine minutes. In order to see how the computer is affected by this scan, we can open the task manager. Click on start and type task. You can see the task manager application, double click. On the top of the window, you can see the CPU usage, which is at the moment at 98%. By clicking on the CPU, you can actually sort the result by the application using the most CPU to the application using the less CPU. The first application is the anti-malware service executable. You can actually expand it and see what process is actually using the most CPU. As you can see, Microsoft Defender Antivirus Service is using now 85% to 90% of the CPU. As a result, only a few percentage of the processing power can be allocated to other application. The current CPU usage is sitting at 92%. But let's say that I would like to browse the internet. I open Edge. As you can see, the usage for the CPU spike at 100%. As a result, my computer can become slow. Therefore, if your computer is slow because of the antivirus scan, I would recommend that you either cancel the scan or schedule it to a different time where you are not actually working on your computer. The second cause for a computer to be slow can be due to the startup applications. Startup applications are the programs that are launched during your computer startup. There are two main ways to see which application start up when your computer boots up. The first way is to click on start and type startup. You can see the startup apps, double click. The application are now sorted based on the impact they have on your computer when you start up. So the first one is Microsoft OneDrive, which is on. This has a high impact. That means that it will most likely slow down your computer during the boot up. If you are using OneDrive, then you don't want to disable this because you want your application to start when the computer boots up. You want all your files to be synchronized and you don't want to have to click on OneDrive in the application startup menu to actually get OneDrive going. If you forgot to start OneDrive, then your file and folder won't synchronize and then you might you might be in trouble if you want to actually access your files uh, on another computer on a remote location. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide if you would like to enable or disable a program when the computer boots up. So now tip number three. Uh, we will try to improve the hard drive performance uh, because a full hard drive can reduce the performance of certain tasks on a computer, uh, particularly if the drive is hosting the operating system, like Windows 11 in this case, because this is due to an insufficient space to host temporary files and the inability to write new data. So one way to free up some space is to open the disk cleanup utility. You can click on start and type run. Open the application and type clean MGR and then OK. Within the utility, you can select which type of files you would like to delete. Just select the log files, the program files, temporary internet files, the errors, report, direct text, delivery optimization files. Just make sure that you have nothing in recycle bins that you actually need to restore in the future. So maybe you can leave this one unchecked, but you can check it if you are sure that you want to delete those files forever. And you can click on the temporary files as well. When you are ready, click OK and confirm. Windows will clean up the files on the disk C and just remove the unnecessary files. 
when it's done, the windows will just close. You can actually reopen it to clear the system files. And just click OK, delete the files. If you're still having issue, you can actually click on the folder, find your disk C, right click on it, go to properties, and then you can click on details. In this area, you will see what is actually on your disk C. You can see the apps, the temporary files, what is in your, on your desktop, documents, pictures, and actually you can have a look in each of them and uh, maybe delete what you don't really need, like that it will be able to free some space on your disk and potentially improve performances. So the tip four of this video will be to turn off the visual effects. For the last few years, Windows has been setting new standards in terms of uh, its designs, but this naturally affects the performance of the device. So one way to improve the performance of Windows 11 is to deactivate some of the built-in visual effects. So one way to get to the settings is to click on start, type system settings, and then you can see view advanced system settings, click on it. You will already be in the correct tab, advanced, then performance, then settings. And in here you can adjust for best performance. I would recommend that you keep smooth edges of screen fonts because what will happen is that if you unselect this one, the fonts and uh, all the text might be a bit pixelized, then it's not actually the best things uh, to look at. So the tip number five of this video is to actually keep Windows 11 updated. So updating Windows 11 regularly is recommended. The first reason is to regularly close critical security gaps. This update can also provide bug fixes and optimized code and it will automatically increase stability and performance. As a result, it is worth checking those updates regularly. One way to get there is to click on Start, Settings, and then on Windows Update. Once on the page, you can actually see what updates are available. In this case, uh, I'm missing important security updates, so I can just click on here and install them all. The third one is actually an um, optional update, so it's not critical, but um, it's available for me to download, so I can just download it and install when uh, those two updates are completed. Once the updates have been uh, downloaded and installed, you will be able to uh, restart your computer because some of them will need a restart to actually be applied. You can restart now. So once you have restarted, you can go back to the Windows Update page and it will tell you that you are up to date. In the case that you actually uh, get this message uh, the first time you open the page, you can actually click on Check for Updates and just make sure that there is no update available. In this case, it's just checked and the only update available is actually an optional update. You can download and install it if you would like to. So the tip number six of this video is to use a defragmentation for the disk. So the defragmentation tool will increase the read and write speed on a hard drive disk. So files are actually not stored uh, adjacent to each other on the disk. And for that reason, uh, the disk, uh, mechanical disk actually, uh, will need to rotate and move to different sectors of the disk to find the correct data. So the disk defragmentation tools will actually rearrange all those data to make them close to each other and like that speed up the process for the reading and the writing on the disk. Please note that um, this process is only useful for mechanical disk. Uh, many computers nowadays uh, use uh, solid state drive disk and uh, defragmentation is actually not uh, used and not useful for those type of disk. To access the defragmentation tools, you just need to close the window, just go to the folder, click on this PC, find your disk you would like to defragment, properties, then tools, and then you can optimize and defragment drive. Click on optimize. You can select the drive you want. If you have multiple drives, you can select the one you would like to analyze and defragment, and you can just analyze it. In this case, it will tell me that the current status is 
there is a need for optimization. You can click on optimize to actually optimize a defragmented disk. Please also note that there is a schedule optimization that is currently on and I believe it's on by default. Uh, you can change the settings to uh, run the scheduled uh, defragmentation which can be daily, weekly, or monthly. So if you have some issue um, with the read and write performances, you can just do it manually, analyze, and then optimize. Or you can just have a schedule uh, to run a daily, weekly, or monthly. But um, please be aware that performances during the defragmentation uh, process uh, might slow down your computer. So it is best to actually do it while you are not using your computer, maybe overnight, or you know, when you are doing something else. Then the tip number seven uh, for this video is to actually reset Windows 11. Sometimes you are unable to fix uh, performances issues for various reasons. Therefore, you might consider resetting the entire operating system and get back to actually a clean uh, state of the operating system. Before doing a system reset, there are two things that you need to do. The first thing is to create a backup of your files and possibly the whole system. So doing a full reset of Windows 11 will involve removing all the files and uh, you might lose all your programs, all your private files or anything that you have stored on the computer. So the second thing that you need to do um, first is maybe run the troubleshooter. So you can just click on start settings. Then once you're in a system area, you can just scroll down Go to troubleshoot and then from here you can see the other troubleshooters and from here you can run a troubleshooter for a specific area of your operating system so if you have any specific issue with your network camera bluetooth windows update you can just run those troubleshooters it will give you some uh, way to fix uh, those issues and um, worst case scenario if you still have problems and then you want to reset your pc you can then reset it so to be able to reset your computer, uh, you just need to click on Start, Settings. Then while you are in the System section, scroll down to Recovery. And then in the Recovery options, you have the Reset This PC. After you click on Reset, you will be shown uh, multiple options. Um, I have made another video. Please uh, check it uh, just to see how you can reset your computer. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when a new video is released. Thank you and have a good day.